with me is an influential figure from mongolia he has been the former president of mongolia prime minister as well and he's here in india so welcome to vion uh, what's your key focus during your india visit well uh, uh, between india and mongolia we have centuries old uh, relationships uh, we think that india is our spiritual neighbor because of the fact that buddhism has been adopted in mongolia as a major religion so we consider india as a sacred place and a special place for every mongolian to visit mm -hmm. and based on that uh, understanding of india we think that uh, in 21st century we should develop comprehensive all embracing relationships between india it goes beyond the spiritual aspect of these relationships. It goes now to economics, to education, to medicine, and also to security issues. And uh, we try to define this kind of relationships in the terms of having a third neighbor. Mm -hmm. uh, you know that uh, geographically we have two neighbors, Russia to the north and uh, China to the south. But we think that in this modern world, when everyone depends on each other, and uh, the success of any country in the world is not only depending on its own neighbors, but also on other countries, we have been trying for quite a few number of years to develop that kind of concept of having a third neighbor. So India is a natural third neighbor mm -hmm. because we have been in contact with India spiritually for many centuries. And now with the rise of India, with the fact that India is becoming much more stronger, both economically and also spiritually and also in terms of geopolitics, we think that uh, the 21st century uh, is a good time for us to develop all embracing uh, relationships. So in this uh, context, I think uh, I was kindly invited by CCR to pay a visit here. And uh, by the way, my uh, last official visit was in 2003, mm -hmm. when late uh, Prime Minister Vajpayee was in office. Mm -hmm. And he kindly invited me and extended his hospitality and we upgraded the relationships between our two countries to the level of strategic relationships. Mm -hmm. So it also adds that kind of flavor and color to our uh, traditional relationships. Mm -hmm. So we have signed a lot of important documents. And nowadays, uh, under the leadership of uh, Mr. Modi, the Prime Minister of India, uh, he was the first ever Prime Minister of India who visited Mongolia in 2015. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, he made a very good uh, gesture. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, uh, he made a decision to give a soft loan mm -hmm. to Mongolia in the sum of 1.2 billion US dollars to build up a refinery mm -hmm. so that it doesn't depend on Russia or on China in uh, having fuel for the industry. Mm -hmm. With the uh, start of this uh, refinery, mm -hmm. which is expected to be in 2025, uh, when we are going to celebrate the 75th anniversary of uh, the establishment of diplomatic relationships between our two country, mm -hmm. countries. Uh, so, starting from 2025, Mongolia will be more independent economically and uh, more sort of uh, able to be flexible and uh, able to maneuver uh, in its uh, uh, ability, uh, capacity to uh, somehow uh, not to be too much depend on the price of uh, fuel, which is being 90% from Russia. Mm -hmm. So you see, I am trying to be uh, active in promoting this kind of relationships. So I'm going to meet here uh, with the foreign minister, who is, by the way, 
is the chairman of the joint uh, government commission mm -hmm. uh, between India and Mongolia. Mm -hmm. I hope that uh, Mr. Jay Shankar will visit Mongolia soon and uh, that visit will, will also uh, further develop uh, our very close uh, relationships. Mm -hmm. uh, so you mentioned about Buddhism. Uh, you are a practicing uh, uh, Buddhist, Buddhist as, yes. uh, I believe. Uh, mm -hmm. How do you see India's role when it comes to a country that uh, is a country from where, of course, Buddhism originated mm -hmm. and also when it comes to Tibetan Buddhism as well, uh, if you can talk about that as well, India supporting them, India supporting the Lai Lama as well? Well, I think India is the country of Buddhism uh, and now uh, it's trying to uh, remind the world that this is actually the country of Buddhism. So I think Mr. Modi and the other leaders of this country doing quite good and active uh, uh, and uh, taking uh, good and active endeavors to promote the India's status in this regard uh, uh, and make it higher. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm, I mean about the organization in India of uh, World Buddhist Leaders uh, Congress mm -hmm. and which was attended by many Mongolian uh, heads of uh, monasteries. I think it's uh, very important that Buddhism uh, brings us together. Buddhism originated from Hinduism, which is the main religion here. So we feel these special connections through Buddhism and Hinduism between our two countries. I think this uh, brings us uh, uh, to the point when uh, it's much easier for us to discuss any issue uh, related to our cooperation. Mm -hmm. So I think uh, Mongolia is being uh, uh, a Buddhist country uh, where the majority of the people are observing Buddhism uh, is, uh, uh, could be a very reliable and good partner for India. Mm -hmm. uh, so you talked about the oil refinery. This is mm -hmm. a major project India is undertaking in your country. How do you see India's development support, infrastructure support in your country? Uh, what do you expect from New Delhi when it comes to perhaps more such projects in your country? Well, I think that uh, this is a very uh, important project. I hope that it will be a successful one. Uh, as I said earlier, uh, with the launch of this project and when the refinery starts working, we'll be much more independent in terms of uh, providing fuel to our industry inside of the country. Mm -hmm. At the same time, we uh, do appreciate our friends in India helping Mongolia in a way that this is, uh, I think, uh, one of the biggest projects uh, any country uh, carried out in Mongolia since all these democratic changes started in 1990. Mm -hmm. So we uh, want to say that India has shown a good example. And other countries, maybe we hope that they will be following this good example of carrying out a good project, uh, which is aimed at the development of enhancing the development of the country. Mm -hmm. I, we hope that maybe with the, the possible visit of uh, Foreign Minister Jai Shankar, uh, maybe we will be starting talking about the second big project. Mm -hmm. uh, maybe it could be related to infrastructure or agricultural development or IT cooperation, uh, so there is a huge potential uh, for the development of our two countries. Certainly Mongolia will be uh, the winner, of course, as a small country. Uh, if these big projects are uh, carried out, India uh, in relationships with its uh, small so-called spiritual neighbors or close countries doesn't pursue the goal of being winner mm -hmm. in terms of economical results. But India sh is certainly a winner in terms of continuing the traditional relations mm -hmm. and uh, making its presence in Mongolia mm -hmm. uh, valid and uh, 
uh, and uh, uh, visible. Mm -hmm. uh, sir, you, when you started, you mentioned about the security uh, cooperation between mm -hmm. the two countries. There is defense cooperation as well. Uh, exercises uh, nomadic elephant took place just a few weeks ago. Mm -hmm. uh, how do you see this kind of cooperation in terms of security, in terms of defense taking forward? Well, I think that this is, uh, has been done for quite a few number of years. I think uh, uh, we have a uh, uh, certain kind of uh, uh, potential mm -hmm. to uh, work in this uh, field. Mm -hmm. And security-wise, uh, I think uh, Mongolia's and India's cooperation are quite successful. I think it's uh, also important for both countries. Mm -hmm. uh, share of information, uh, share of knowledge and, uh, and experience. Of course, it is very important. And we know that the Indian friends are also interested in, in doing this. And we think that uh, a third neighbor also uh, has to be uh, this uh, concept of third neighbor should also include this uh, cooperation in the uh, sphere of security. And also, it can go, and it must go, uh, to our cooperation within the international organizations, the United Nations, other international organizations. Mm -hmm. And then uh, we have to support each other, because we know that India is a big country, a peace loving country. Uh, India's uh, foreign policy concept is based on dialogue, mm -hmm. on discussion, of resolving any uh, difficult issues. So this is the concept we fully support, and we think that this dialogue between our two countries can be expanded into the dialogue and discussion among other countries. Mm -hmm. And that will bring, bring uh, certainly good results within the framework of the, of the activities of our countries uh, of in, in international organizations. Mm -hmm. Uh, sir, talking about your another neighbor, that is China, how do you see relationship with China? How do you see their role in perhaps projects in your country? BRI is one project which they have been talking about off and on. So how do you see relationship with Beijing? Well, uh, China is our natural uh, neighbor. So we cannot move out from that place or China can uh, move out from that place. So we will be neighbors always and that makes us uh, more responsible. And uh, we are glad that China is saying that, uh, please take advantage of being our neighbor. Mm -hmm. And we think that uh, the process of uh, modernization of China, mm -hmm. uh, China being uh, uh, on this uh, development uh, process uh, uh, for a certain uh, number of years mm -hmm. and quite successfully uh, helps us to uh, develop also economically. At the same time, of course, any other country in the world would be concerned that if trade with any other neighbor makes up 90% of our trade, foreign trade. Mm -hmm. So we would want to balance this trade. We are selling raw materials, cooking coal, copper, whatever we produce as a raw material, minerals, to China and Chinese market. This is a huge market. So we are thankful the Chinese markets are uh, buying these products and uh, bringing a good income to Mongolia. At the same time, we want to get developed. And in terms of uh, making final product, in terms of processing the, those goods, I think India uh, could be a good potential partner. Bring IT technology, bring new technology to make these uh, raw materials uh, being processed and producing final products, and not only selling to China, but to Korea, to Japan, to Europe, to the United States. So uh, in this sense, I think these big countries can, uh, it's not necessary for them to compete, but uh, to uh, complement each other. Mm -hmm. So I think it's in this sense, I think India's relationship with Mongolia is very important. And this is going to be uh, the relationships which will bring uh, our development onto the next stage. Mm -hmm. So recently, the Dalai Lama identified uh, 
the reincarnation of a Mongolian spiritual leader. Do you think that will have a implication on the relationship with China? Do you think that China will be angry over this development? Well, is the any religious issue or any kind of uh, spiritual life issue is of course the issue of uh, uh, the internal issue of of a given country. In Mongolia, we have this tradition of having uh, Buddhism. Uh, we had the three waves of uh, Buddhism being spread in Mongolia. First through Central Asia, second uh, uh, during the Yuan Dynasty, when uh, Kublai Khan declared that Buddhism as the state religion. And later on, uh, in the 16th century, we have adopted the Tibetan form of Buddhism. So Tibetan form of Buddhism is one of those forms of Buddhism which were coming to Mongolia for all these uh, years, for all these centuries. Mm -hmm. So I think uh, Buddhism generally as a religion of peace loving people, uh, uh, the philosophy of Buddhism is based on, uh, on non-violence of, uh, of uh, uh, bringing peace into your own mind and that means that uh, this, uh, uh, f this uh, characteristic of Buddhism also helps to bring peace to the world. I think Mongolia will try to be a good partner both of India and China, Japan, Korea where Buddhism are uh, very important factors in, their, in defining their own cultures, that Buddhism can bring us together and uh, there is no necessity for us to fight uh, over uh, religious issues. Religions should bring us together and uh, Buddhism, especially Buddhism with its peaceful philosophy can bring us, uh, bring us together and uh, uh, cooperation in the field of Buddhism will enrich our nations. Mm -hmm. uh, sir, uh, my final question to you is uh, about your another neighbor, that's Russia. How mm -hmm. do you see Russia with uh, uh, Mongolia, the relationship, how they share? They have a historic relationship. It is one of your uh, second neighbor. And how do you see the uh, Ukraine conflict impacting your country? Well, uh, well uh, geographically speaking, Ukraine is far away. So it's uh, uh, not easy to say how it impacts us. Uh, in our relationships with, with, with Russia. Of course, sanctions against Russia has been put uh, through international organizations and also through uh, many countries. And we ha have to follow those sanctions. At the same time, general public perceives Russia as a good neighbor. Yes. Because for the last century, almost century, a hundred years, Russians have been helping us to uh, uh, to strengthen our independence, to uh, bring good education, uh, good uh, medical service, and uh, doing some good infrastructure projects like railroads uh, and uh, building up uh, quite modern cities and uh, 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 carrying out housing projects. So Russia is still perceived by the majority of the people as a good neighbor, as an important neighbor. So, uh, in this uh, uh, tragic time, when there is a war going on between Russia and Ukraine, we all pray for peace between these two brotherly countries and brotherly nations. We cannot uh, uh, expect that uh, there will be a winner in this war. There, there, are, there are only losers, unfortunately. So we would like uh, this uh, war end as quickly as possible and uh, all the conflicts should be resolved uh, by peaceful means. Mm -hmm. So this is the position of Mongolia and we want this war end as soon as possible. Mm -hmm. uh, so uh, I know I have uh, already asked the last question but one thing additionally since you are here in India, India is the chair of the G20 grouping. Uh, this is a mega economic grouping. We are going to host the summit next month. Uh, uh, how do you see India's role when it comes to bringing the voice of the Global South on the table in front of these large economies? I think it's very important. India is a huge, the, in fact, the largest democracy. So India's experience in going 
on, the, on, on this road of democratic changes in this huge country. It's a whole new civilization, I mean, independent civilization. So I think India should be leading, yes, South, other sort of uh, uh, countries onto the world stage. So I think I congratulate, I try to, I, I, I want to congratulate India on being a host of G20, and I am quite sure that India will be successful, and India's voice is heard, India's uh, actions are uh, felt, and, uh, uh, and I hope that uh, after this historic G20 meeting in India, uh, the summit in India, uh, there will be much more concern in the world about the fate of uh, uh, the countries uh, of so-called in a very broad term, uh, South. Mm -hmm. So I would like to encourage Indian friends to be uh, not finishing what they have started doing with the uh, fact that they are going to organize this G20 meeting here, but continue to play this role. Mm -hmm. And Mongolia will be a good partner. Mm -hmm. Well, thank you so much, sir. It was a pleasure thank speaking you. to you. And as they say in India, Namaste, sir. Thank, thank you, you so much thank for you. speaking to Vion.